There is nothing at all sexy about today's video. We're going to talk about folders, we're going to talk about organization, we're going to talk about file types, and so much more. Straight to the top we go. Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to talk about how best to organize your ROMs and BIOS files. So this video isn't going to show you where to get ROMs and BIOS files. That's not the point of this video and you can check the description for a video discussion on that topic. This video is going to be all about organizing those ROMs. So the right file types that you want to have, the right folders, the right systems, all of that sort of thing we're going to talk about today. And this isn't difficult to do either. The important thing here is that you just have one spot somewhere that houses all of your ROMs. For me, I have a home server that runs 24 seven, but it doesn't need to be anything substantial. It could just be your normal computer. It could be a USB drive. It could just be an SD card that you have and all of your folders are on there. All you need is just a folder called ROMs, and then inside of that is gonna be all of the subfolders for different systems. And that is as simple as you can make it. So as long as you have somewhere to put those ROMs, that's all you need. And for today and for my ROMs, they're all lossless with the most space saving and they're most compatible with really any device or emulator. That was the point of what I wanted to do is make sure that everything works with everything. So basically you can be confident that anything I show today works on pretty much any emulator or device with a small asterisk for the 1% it doesn't. But now if you're wondering how much space you actually need, my curated ROM library, meaning I didn't go and grab every single game for a system because that is just insanity. And this doesn't include Nintendo Switch, Xbox, Xbox 360, PS3 or Wii U, but it's under 500 gigabytes total. Now, if you add those systems, it can balloon exponentially, of course. But for the size of a 512 gigabyte card, you can have everything that you want ready to go and loaded. So you can see here in my folder, I have an Atari 2600 folder, Dreamcast, FB Neo, and so on. You just keep going. The question that you likely have right now is how do you decide what to name these folders? And the answer is there is no right answer, but Obviously, if you are only using Android devices, and let's say you're only using Emulation Station as a front end, then you'd be safe to just name your folders based off of that. So you could easily just copy everything over from the folder end and just paste it onto your device. So it all depends on what you're using the most. And if you find that you're using a specific system or firmware or front end or anything like that the most, and they have a specific naming convention, then just name your folders off of that. You're also going to see that I have a BIOS folder as well. And inside of that, I have folders for different systems or just a general RetroArch folder. And these house all of my BIOS files. If your question is which BIOS file should you keep or curate, check the description for my link on that and the files that you want. I did it by per system, so it's an easy list for you to go and reference. Generally, BIOS files are necessary for disk-based systems like PS1, PS2, Dreamcast, and so on, and it's good to have them ready to go. I would consider this a mandatory part of organizing your collection. You should have a BIOS folder. Back to the folders and let's talk about file types. If I jump into my Atari 2600 folder, you're going to see that all of my files are zipped but inside of the actual zip, they're using file types of A26. Personally, my entire collection of ROMs outside of disk-based systems, which we're going to talk about, is zipped. There is no reason not to do so. It saves space, and basically every device and emulator can handle zip files. But also when I do come across a random device or firmware that doesn't support zip files, I throw it into the garbage. I'm kidding, but what I actually do is I'll just extract the zips on that device, but it's rare for me to need to do so. Speaking of devices, this video is sponsored by Ugreen, and they have you covered with their Prime Day deals on both their Nexode 100 watt charger and their Nexode 25,000 milliamp hour 145 watt power bank. That way you're good at home and on the go. The 100 watt charger supports up to 100 watts of power over USB-C. 
which is great for a lot of laptops like the MacBook Air M2, which you can charge up to 55% in less than 30 minutes. But also the fancy expensive handhelds like the GPD Win 4, the Steam Deck, Odin 2, and others. Then for your retro handhelds usage, you want to make good use of the USB-A port, since this awesome charger has three USB-C ports and one USB-A. But let's say that you're on the go and need to charge. Their 25,000 milliamp hour power bank supports up to 145 watts of fast charging, which is just insane, and it's great to quickly charge some of those fancy expensive handhelds or laptops or just use that USB-A port for your retro handhelds again. It even has this awesome LED display to tell you how much power you have left. With 25,000 milliamp hours of battery storage, you can fully charge one of these devices multiple times. Even a Nintendo Switch could be charged over four times to full, making it a perfect companion for traveling. It's Prime Day, so check out Ugreen's deals for up to 41% off, linked in the description. So let's head to our first disc-based system, and that's Dreamcast. And you're going to see here that I have them in a CHD file format. You're also going to notice that there's a hidden folder. Let's talk about the CHD file format first, because Dreamcast games come in CDI, GDI, Q, BIN, and so many other file formats. And you're also going to notice that it's not zipped. While there are some emulators that do respect zipping disk-based systems, it's not all of them, and you want your library to be easily compatible so you can keep it unzipped for disk-based systems. Frankly though, CHD is the best out of all the other file formats for Dreamcast. It compresses the file by a ton so you save a lot of space, and it also makes it a single file, whereas if you have bins, you probably notice there's a bunch of different bin files and then a Q file. But don't worry, I'm going to show the conversion process to get to CHD later on in the video. Let's go ahead and talk about this hidden folder now. You might have noticed, if you have a multi-disc game like Shenmue, for example, and that has three discs, or a lot of PS1 games like Final Fantasy, it makes it a bit ugly for front ends on a device. You just want the game to show as Shenmue, one listing, but the front end shows each disc as a game, so you have three or four different listings. The workaround is using something called M3U Playlist to do so. Here's how you do it. First, you create a dot hidden folder, and you put all of your multi-disc games inside of it. Next, create a file with the same game name minus the disc number and with an extension of dot M3U. So, using Shenmue as an example still, the file name would be Shenmue, and then Europe, and then a bunch of different languages, .m3u. You can see that the disk is all missing, all of that is missing. Open that file in Notepad, and you want to basically write the path to the games. So, you would put .hidden, and then slash the game name, for each disk on each line. What I basically do is I right click the game name, rename, copy all of the text, and then I paste it into the notepad document, and it's easy to just edit from there. Exactly how you see it on screen is how you want yours to look like, and then you can save the file. This M3U file is going to live with all of the rest of your Dreamcast games, and it basically acts as a shortcut to say that, hey, the games are actually in the hidden folder, and I'm just here to look pretty. The hidden folder in a lot of cases will actually be hidden. You won't even see it a lot of times on your devices. You also might not be able to see it on your operating system after you create it. In which case, depending on your operating system, so if it's Windows, just enable showing hidden files and folders in your operating system settings. But the general idea is you want the M3U file to be with all of the rest of your Dreamcast games, and then all of the disks will be in that hidden folder. Now, one thing that might trip you up is how RetroArch handles M3U files. So let's do a quick example now. Let's say that you want to play Shenmue, and so you click it from the front end, and it might ask you which one you want to run, and you're going to select the M3U file, or the one that doesn't have a disk showing. 
You're now taken to RetroArch, and for the sake of argument, let's say you want to play Disc 2. Or maybe you finished Disc 1 and you're ready to go to Disc 2. Enter the RetroArch menu, go to Disc Control, and now eject Disc. Then, change current disk index to whatever disk that you want to use or play, and then select Insert Disk. Quick and easy, and that's how you change disks. This is an easy way to organize your disk-based systems, so it works for PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, and Sega Dreamcast. Let's talk about PlayStation 2. You're going to notice that my PS2 folder does not have a hidden folder, and there is no M3U files. The answer is PS2 emulators don't support M3U, so there's no reason to create it. It's unfortunate, I know. However, GameCube and Wii do have support for it, but only with Dolphin on PC and not Android. So if you don't use Dolphin for Android, you can do M3Us like I showed, but if you do, I would avoid it. It's why I don't personally use M3Us for my GameCube or Wii games and I only do it for Dreamcast, PS1, and Saturn. Back to that whole easy compatibility with everything thing. For GameCube and Wii, I use RVZ. It's lossless and it saves you space. You can also convert from ISO to RVZ inside of Dolphin if you need to, and I would suggest doing so if you have ISOs. To do so within Dolphin, with your game added already, right click on the game and then convert file and then just click convert. It'll ask you where to save. Feel free to save it in your GameCube ROMs folder and that's it. Simple, you can now delete your original ISO if you want. So just a quick recap on file types for all of the popular systems. Dreamcast, PS1, PS2, PSP and Saturn are all CHD formatted with PSP being the exception that uses a different way to create CHD files, and we'll talk about that in a second, but it's still CHD. GameCube and Wii use the RVZ file format. Nintendo 3DS uses decrypted.3ds files, which we can't talk about, and then generally everything else is zipped. Before we talk about converting, there's a few newer systems that we haven't talked about. For PlayStation 3, I found that having folders with .ps3 added to the end of them, and inside of that being the game files, works the best. If you have an ISO, you're going to need to decrypt it usually for RPCS3, and then you can make it look the way that I do, and I have instructions on my website for how to do so. For Vita, I keep mine zipped, and Xbox and Xbox 360 are ISO formats. On the Wii U front, I use .wua, which is specifically meant for CMU and emulation. These specific WUA files actually combine the base game, the update, and the DLC if you have it. It's an awesome way to just have a single file that has everything in it. So let's take a look at how to do so. Open CMU with your game added already, and then head to Tools, Title Manager, Search for the game you want to combine, right click on the base game and select Convert to Compressed Wii U Archive. If you had updates and DLC, it should show now and say the following will be converted. Click OK. Choose where you want to save the file, so a Wii U folder in your ROMs directory would be a good choice. It's going to take some time and then when it's done, you're all set. Let's talk about converting for disk-based systems, from bins and queues or ISOs to CHD. For Dreamcast, Saturn, PS1, and PS2, you can use CHD Man, and I have all of this on my website. But it's a simple zip file, and you extract it to get the CHD Man program, and a bat file. All you have to do is put these two files into the same folder with all of your bins and queues or ISO files, and then just double click the bat file. It's going to open a window showing its progress and it'll go to work converting all of them into single CHD files. You can then remove the bins and queues or ISOs after if you want. Now for PlayStation Portable it uses a different method. It's still CHD man, but the function is different. So you have to download a specific CHD man zip file and only use it for PSP games. 
but the steps are the exact same. Extract the zip and then place the two files into the same folder as all of your PSP ISOs or however you have them and then run the bat file. For the hundredth time, all of this is in the description and it's separated by system so you can go one by one and do everything that you need and see what file types you need and how to convert them. However, for PSP, I would not delete your original ISOs after converting. And for the simple reason that CHD support is new and a lot of our retro handhelds don't support it yet. So you'll want to keep a library of ISOs just for those devices that don't support CHD yet. Or alternatively, you can just stick to keeping ISOs for now, but CHD is much better for space saving and really everything. After all of this is done, you should have a nice curated list and organized with all the right file types that are compatible with pretty much any device and you are ready to just put them on any device that you get without worry. And so that's it for this one. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord if you get stuck or you need help with retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.